is everywhere. The dwarves fight a desperate battle against the savage Greenskins. The Empire is under siege by the marauding armies of Chaos. And across the Great Ocean, the Dark Elves assault Ulthuan, the island home of the High Elves. Faced with certain doom, Elves, men, and dwarves have united their forces to form an alliance of order. Should they fail, the forces of destruction will conquer all. This is the dawn of a new age. An age where the fate of nations will be forged in the fires of war. This is the age of reckoning. In the centuries I have been the High King, our enemies have thought us weak. Cowards, hiding in the deepest, darkest places. <laughs> Fools. Every wrong is recorded. Every slight against us, page after page, etched in blood. Clan Gunnison, Carrick Eight Peaks, Joseph Bookman. The Urks must pay. Them come. Thoughts. It's even worse than I thought. And I know how to paint a dreary picture. Now you get out of here and make one hell of a stand. A moment of respite. Gather your strength. Weapons ready, Dragbarazi! Raki are everywhere! Sigma walks with us! We shall not fail!
Under the world, they chitter and plan. Watching, waiting. When they emerge, it is a nightmare vision. The Skaven, a ravenous horde of verminous ratmen. They gnaw at the roots of the world like an infected wound. They mean to rule over ruins, for such is the will of their god, the great horned rat. Only the island home of the High Elves has remained unscathed. And at its center is the Great Vortex. A swirling maelstrom that siphons chaos from the world. The Skaven covered its vast power with envious, beady red eyes. An enigma to men and dwarfs who know them as High Elves. At the center of the great ocean lies Althuan, a paradise created by the Old Ones. But when the Stellar Gates collapsed, demons flooded the mortal plane. All was lost until Anarion the Defender strode forth. The first Phoenix King vanquished the demons. With the aid of the Archmage, Kalador Dragon Tamer. It was Kalador and his Elven Mages who created the Great Vortex. A swirling maelstrom that siphoned the excess magic, withering demon kind. With the world purged of chaos, the elves took it upon themselves to become guardians and stewards. The world has seen countless murders. But one killing stands above all others. One death that has shaped the world. Malekith, son of Enerion, was betrayed. The elven princes crowned Belshanar as the second Phoenix King. So Malekith brooded and poured his hate into a single cup. Malekith toasted Belshanar then stepped over his dying body and into the sacred flame of kings. But the fire stripped his flesh, and with a final scream, he hurled himself back from whence he came. His body was taken north, and a suit of armor forged. Malekith was reborn. The witch King, and in his shadow, legions raised. Decades of civil war followed. Then Malekith embarked on the most ruthless of plans. His sorcerers would unbind the magic of the Great Vortex. Created by Kalador Dragon Tamer and his elven mages, the Vortex siphons the winds of magic, keeping the demon tide at bay. Malekith's spell was flung at the Vortex, but Kalador himself broke through the mists of time to deflect the titanic force back at its casters. The Shadowlands were ravaged, sundered,
You live. You die. You live. You die. Servants, you amuse me. The dragon with two tails hangs in the sky. And you indulge in petty games. You summoned me, your highness. You bring this witch here. She is well versed in law and prophecies. She will betray you, my son, as all have done. She is indebted to me. I have her soul. Step forward, Felicity, your heart keeper. The comet disrupts the vortex. Whilst it is weak, a prophecy can be fulfilled. Of a king who consumes the heart of Alfwan. My son will take its power and our vengeance. Find the Oracle. She knows what to do. I am willing to serve to earn my soul's release. The twin-tailed comet is oft seen as an omen, but this time its wake has disturbed the winds of magic. In the secret halls of the Under Empire, the Council of Thirteen has gathered. A time to scheme of opportunity. I kill dwarf things in Pillar City. No, no! Clan Moors go to Southlands. Hunt for Wolfstone. Moors are puppet minion. Pestilence infest Lustria. Yes, yes! But all Wolfstone for Council Plan. Come, scribe slave. Work to do. Comet makes elf things weak. Council wants power of the vortex. <laughs> Just as prophecy demands. <laughs> so it too. You read markings on the black pillar. Then you know we must seek find the screaming one. Find out how to control the vortex. Oh, oh yes, master. But, but a large tribute of warp stone will that demon require if, if we summon him. <laughs> Return to your assigned clan. Harvest warp stone. Yes, most precipitous of masters. And flay yourself, your impertinence. Oh, it will be done, your worship. The dragon with two tails flies lower than before. Its trail disturbs the vortex. I have felt a change in the winds of magic. Then write it, brother. Lead the mages of Safari. Bring all in the White Tower to bear if you must. Such lore is currently beyond us. I suggest a scrying ritual in the Pool of Isha. It may provide us with the answer. Such a ritual requires fragments of fallen waystones. Far more than we have. Then we find more. Make ready your ritual, Lord Master Talarian. You will have your fragments. I shall start the search in Lustria. Lustria? My brother will search here, in Ulthwan. Why do you care so much about the greater world? Why do you not? Stay here, brother. Protect Ulthwan. But I venture beyond our borders. And while you meddle in far-flung continents, I will ensure you have a home to return to. The ritual cast, and magic bound within the scrolls of Hecate was unleashed, lighting the dark skies of Nagaroth. The sorceress Felicion was joined by a murderer one that hunted in the shadows. 
They looked upon the island across Poison Shore and waited. Approaching the island was all but impossible. Yet the ritual gave the sorceress ingress. Felician bargained with the Oracle. In exchange for her freedom, the Medusa bade the sorceress to look in the mirror. At the heart of hated Althuan, the Vortex was vulnerable. If the Witch King wished to step into the Maelstrom and bathe in its power, then his body would need to be ready. A drink from a cursed goblet was required, filled with the life force of five victims. The rituals would reveal the prey that the sorceress and her assassin must hunt. An irony that the Oracle was blind to her own fate. Four more sacrifices needed to fill the goblet. Then the Witch King may drink and be ready to enter the Vortex. More of Hecate's scrolls must be found. Galifreus, squire of Tyrion. They would be the prince's eyes as the goddess Isha revealed her prophecy. The lawmaster and squire saw the Isle of the Dead wreathed in fire. The vortex gone. Without the vortex, Chaos floods the world, with Althuan doomed to sink beneath the waves. But the star crown of Lilith has the power to restore it. The crown was shattered long ago. If the lost shards are reforged, Althuan can be saved. Isha has blessed our agents with one piece of the Star Crown, but four shards remain lost. Talarian suggests invoking the spirits of the Phoenix Kings, for who better than a king to find a crown? The cost is high to cast such rituals. More way fragments are needed. Finabar the Seafarer, the reigning Phoenix King, was called upon to reveal the second shard of the Star Crown. The wave fragments are cast so the tides move at the Seafarer's command. The living King has done his part. Now it is time to evoke the royal spirits of old. Cordadris, the Scholar King. His knowledge bequeathed to those who searched, including where the third shard lay, and how to slay the worm that hoarded it. Be gone! Servant of chaos! Strike, Galifreus!
time is against us. There are others that perform their own rituals of dominance over the Vortex. The ritual enacted, the skies over the world shatter, exciting the Grey Seer while his scribe cowered, for he knew their next destination. Deep in the fetid jungle swamplands was the lair of the Screaming One, summoned to this plane by the ritual. Not risking his whiskers, the master sent his minion into the lair. Within, the vermin lord awaited. The Screaming One spoke of the Vortex at the heart of the Elf Thing's island continent. It was vulnerable due to the comet's passing, ripe for Skaven interference. An engine of doom and curses must be constructed and empowered by four more rituals. The Vortex will be bound to this machine on completion of the final ritual, giving Skaven untold power. The Screaming One granted the lowly scribe an object encased in iron. The scribe eyed it greedily, but the demon demanded the gift handed to Grace Seer Valskreek. And a final gift, rituals of fabrication to build the machine. The scribe's adopted clan would begin construction at once. But warp stone is needed to power the rituals, and False Creek already grows impatient. The scrolls revealed the second sacrifice, a hated foe, a prince of Althwan who had confounded the sorceress once before. The assassin took his blood, and she reveled in death. The chalice begins to fill. But more of Hecate's scrolls are needed to find the next sacrifice. Shannar, the explorer, as he used the stars to navigate the world, their light shone upon the king's lost vessel. There, Gallifreyus! I see it! The fourth shard of the Star Crown was found within. Thanks to the Phoenix Kings, the Star Crown is near complete. But there is one who is yet to be evoked. The first, the greatest, the doom. The third victim was also known to the sorceress, but this was no enemy. The pupil looked upon her teacher and saw the true cost of dark magic. <laughs> Success breeds expectation, and the Witch King demands. Especially when there are others who incite their own rituals of possession over the Vortex. An 
And so construction began on a device to dominate the vortex. Warp stone enhanced lumber was required. And the gnawing of rats provided it. The Grey Seer was pleased and raced back to Skaven Blight to report on his accomplishment. The ritual revealed a new location. It was in Lustrian swamps the Grey Seer sent his minions next. Under the dank, fetid surface, did they find Sotek cursed bones to lash upon the machine? The Council sends reports that other powers seek control of the Vortex. The race is on. In the North reigned the Fourth Sacrifice. One close to the cold heart of the Sorceress. A warrior, an enslaver, a warlord, a lover. Not that her beauty was spared of the assassin's blade. The prize of a murdered paramour is not to be given freely. Only a brother could offer a sister such a gift. Upon the Grey Seer's orders, did the scribe visit the laboratories of Clan Mulder to secure strong specimens enhanced by the ritual for the labors ahead. Construction continues, but Skaven Blight is strangely silent. Are our lords fully apprised of Valskreek's plan? It was the comet's wake that weakened the Vortex. Surely a cruel trick by the gods. It's not like mortal creatures could move a comet. Onto the device of doom and curses. Yes, yes. But I have studied device, not not, not for controlling vortex. Ah. Finally, you see the truth. A different purpose it has. The fifth and final sacrifice was closest to the sorceress, both in bond and vicinity. She named him Brother. She named him Shadowblade. But he was not the victim. He never was. <laughs> The betrayal amused one who had watched from afar. Anarion the Defender, the first Phoenix King. 
It is inevitable that the fifth and final shard of the Star Crown is found upon the sword that doomed the Asa. They were only here for the shard, but even the Lore Master could feel the sword's pull. And then, something else touched their souls. The fabric of reality was torn. From the realm of ruin, the Skaven's horned god mocked its prey and revealed his plan. The celestial event that weakened the Vortex was of Skaven design, a parody of the true comet. The Council of Thirteen, the Ratmen's highest authority, were architects of this grand manipulation. Its task complete and fuel expended, the rocket fell back to the surface. When the wreckage was discovered, its purpose remained unclear until now. It was the catalyst to weaken the Vortex and goad the other races into action. They knew the Asso would seek to bolster the failing Vortex, but they were ready. Every ritual cast, the magic was stolen, absorbed into the Horned Rat's bell. Now soaked in ritual power, the bell will be moved to Arthwan's heart. If it tolls 13 times, the Horned God shall emerge from the Vortex, the world doomed. Then the God was gone, but in its place came a swarm of his children. of reality was torn, and from the realm of ruin, the Skaven's horned god visited its creatures. Clever child, it whispered with the voice of a thousand screeching rats. If it tolls thirteen times, the horned god shall emerge from the vortex, but there is a cost. The sacrifice of an entire clan. The Horned God demands the Chosen are made ready. <laughs> the Horned One has spoken! And your clan will be fed to him. <laughs> you betray this clan. No, no. This was Council's desire all along. See, gift. A bell clapper given to me. And whichever clan has their blood spilt on it when the bell tolls will be sacrificed. Tell your lord, spill blood here. No, no. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. <laughs> will stop ritual sent many clans. <sighs> Grace, the clan, give their souls. Now we are horned rats favored. Yes, yes. Skaven are on the brink of summoning forth their horned god through the vortex. 
It is the powerful Grey Seer clan that have been marked for the blood sacrifice. The souls the Great Horned Rat must consume to walk amongst us. The Council of Thirteen, of which the Grey Seer clan are most prominent, send their hordes against you. Desperate to wrest the infernal machine from your clutches. Other races sense their doom is coming, and all converge on the Isle of the Dead. The greatest battle of our age is about to begin. While other races focused on controlling the Vortex, the Rat Men have been using a cursed bell to steal their ritual magic. There's no time for a murderer to grieve his sister. With Felician's blood, the chalice is full, and Malekith may drink. The liquid inside, no poison this time, but an elixir that will make his body ready to absorb the Vortex. But first, a god must be halted. The accursed Skaven. They claim the Vortex, their devious schemes twisting it into a portal. If the bell sounds thirteen, the horned god steps unto the mortal realm. Forces gather on the Isle of the Dead, where the greatest battle of our age will be fought. Star Crown reforged, but the crown alone is not enough. 
It must be born into the vortex, delivered to Kalidor by a hero worthy of Safari. And yet the chittering Skaven lurk, defiling Althwan, awaiting the Horned One's arrival. The Vortex must be reclaimed, or the world is doomed. Vermin purged from the island shores. Althwan's defenders are brothers in arms again. And a hero, a lawmaster, one who has proven worthy of the Star Crown to bear its power, walk into the vortex and become the Maelstrom. Ours is a world of fleeting glory, but it is glory nonetheless. A horned god banished, vermin purged from the island's shores. The Witch King has the prize. Alfram and its vortex are mine. My son has his revenge. <laughs> and so the vortex is ready to receive its dark elf master. A new era begins. But there will always be enemies to fight and wars to wage. They would brand us unworthy. These usurpers. For though you have been burned, it only takes a cinder for a phoenix to rise. Citadels. So pretty to behold.
the tales we could tell. Though, truth be told, it started very poorly. I was one, but now we are many. Agree on one thing to sail the coast and down those lizard trinkets, and we will find them. <laughs> Fortune favors the infamous.
place of beauty and darkness. To its south are the Badlands. Arid. Scorched. Home to war-hungry orcs. North, then, past the petty fiefdoms of the Border Princes and through Black Fire Pass. Ah, the mountains. Once home to many dwarfs, their numbers dwindle, but some holds remain strong. To the underways. The great roads below, now plagued by greenskins. And here lies the lands of men and the Empire. Each city a refuge, Bastions of light flickering in the dark. To the east, there is only darkness. For the dead do not rest easily in Sylvania. Over the grey mountains, fair Britonia, an easy ally, or perhaps an enemy. And so to the far north, the ice-gripped realm of Norska lies in the shadow of a twisted power. Change is coming. The old world is weak. The mortal nations flounder in their own incessant and petty wars. Ignorant of what truly awaits in the North. I come before the mighty Archaeon as a mere minion. For now, at least, the gods' favored champion chooses to hear my advice. I pray to the dark powers that I do not fail him. Despite such a risk, I urge my master that now is the time to march south. The Northmen grow restless. We must harness that and send the tribes in a great tide southwards to flood the old world. Archaon himself, chosen of the gods, will lead the hordes of chaos as we despoil the lands of men and dwarfs. No soul, no matter how blackened or pure, shall see salvation.
pathetic cities will follow. mountains. Death comes to the Dwarven realms.
Sigma, savior of the Empire, give me strength. For though I dedicated my life to eradicating it, it feeds, it grows, devouring all. There must be a final answer to halt its advance. But the tide of war seems endless. Bloodlust of the Greenskins, the twisted ambitions of the undead. And though the brave dwarven kingdoms stand with us, truly, what hope is there? Against countless horrors that cannot be named, let alone fought by mortal means. And yet all this is nothing before what is to come. It whispers and roars in the dark it is. Against us it is. It is unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I see it now. The beasts that will devour the world. Yeah. 